Okay, we're being live streamed. Yay. <laughs> well, first of all, well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to John G. Jones Research Lodge number 147. Today, I have one-on-one -on -one conversation with my good friend, uh, my son and brother. That's what I consider him, uh, Gene Goldman. And he can definitely speak for himself. I mean, the guy really can really go in hard on some people at times. But I'm going to allow him to do his thing today as we. Oh, lost you. Tony? You, you're not, go ahead. Are you checking your phone? No, I was uh, messaging you to tell you that we got disconnected. Are you there? You're on mute. There I go. All right. Hey, I appreciate that. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but what I was saying is that I'm going to go ahead and, and have you to go ahead and introduce yourself. Would you please? Uh, my name's Gene. And I'm a Mason. There, how's that? <laughs> nah, nah, you got to do better than that. I, my name is Gene and I'm a Mason. Nah, you got to come. Tell, give the accolades, man. Look, just don't. I mean, it's cool to be humble sometimes, but give the accolades. Come on, you earn them. Come on. I'm man. not going to give you accolades. I will give you my bona fides if you insist. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, I'm past master of Amity Lodge, and uh, which is about to uh, consolidate with another lodge, and uh, I am. Uh, also past master of Black Mountain Lodge and signed their charter as senior warden. I helped uh, help constitute the lodge. Um, aside from that, uh, I've served on a number of Grand Lodge committees and boards and uh, done a lot of training for the Grand Lodge throughout the state of California. Um, I've taught uh, the officers management workshops for the Grand Lodge of California, where we take uh, young officers um, and we teach them their jobs, uh, what, you know, what it means to be uh, a warden, um, what you need to do to, to be um, a deacon not not ritually but the the administrative stuff we teach them how to run a uh, like a if they have a building how to uh, organize a masonic properties association and how to operate that as, as that's a separate entity from the lodge um so all the stuff that isn't ritual <laughs> um how to conduct the, uh, one of my favorite ones was how to conduct the order of business in a, a meeting and what you say and what you don't say and, you know, all relating to Masonic decorum. Mm -hmm. For example, it's, it's uh, I have seen it done too many times uh, where, you know, the secretary in their minutes, they'll say, you know, brother so-and-so gave an exceptionally, uh, you know, proficient degree. Right. Um, well, gee, that's wonderful. But what does that say about the people that didn't get that, uh, that level of, of recognition? Mm -hmm. um, and if their work was just merely acceptable, aren't they do the same measure of respect? Mm -hmm. Uh, for having, you know, properly performed their work. So 
you don't say that you say gave an ex uh, you know gave an exception uh, an acceptable mm -hmm. proficiency or demonstrated their proficiency in you know the lecture of this degree or whatever um so it's a lot of stuff like that a lot of it administrative stuff i was on the board for the institute of masonic studies um and helped conduct a couple of symposia for the grand lodge of california for the uh for the institute um i've been on the masonic education committee we rewrote the uh actually we rewrote the proficiencies created a mentor program i've been on masonic renewal committee for the grand lodge i'm currently on the masonic outreach board um and uh lots of other stuff that annoy people <laughs> what does uh your masonic outreach board consist of uh, our, our Masonic Outreach Board is, uh, I think it's one of the best things that we have done as a Grand Lodge, um, mm -hmm. possibly in our entire 200 plus year history. Um, the Masonic Outreach Program is a program uh, that's advocated by the Grand Lodge, and we have a number of resources available to the lodges and we're, we're strongly encouraging, we can't require them, but we're strongly encouraging lodges to adopt this. And what it is, is, you know, we have historically been really, really good if somebody contacts the lodge and they need assistance. Historically, we've been great at helping them out and getting, you know, getting the job done if they need mm -hmm. a uh, a little bit of cash to make the rent that month because they had a, you know, an unusual right. or, um, you know, they need uh, a ride to get their medications or, or, you know, whatever. But we've always waited for them to contact the lodge. Um, and that's okay. But what Masonic Outreach is about is proactively going going out and meeting with the members, particularly the members that haven't been in a meeting for a while. Right. And especially the, the more senior members um, who maybe can't get to a meeting and uh, finding out what we can do to help make their lives a little bit better. Um, anything from uh, mowing the lawn for a widow um, to painting a house. As a matter of fact, the Grand Lodge contacted uh, Home Depot mm -hmm. and they got Home Depot to donate uh, hundreds of painting kits. Right. They have the, the rollers, the brushes, the cleaners, the drop cloths, the, you know, everything but the paint is in these kits. And we give them lodges that that want to do, you know, want to do some house painting. Right. Uh, so if you got a, a brother's house, you know, you go out to a brother's house or you just drive by and the, the outside of it is, uh, you know, severely weathered. Well, you, you knock on the door and ask them, you know, if the lodge can send a work party to help paint um, and, you know, clean up their yard or whatever it is. Um, if they need the, the kind of assistance that we provide in the Masonic homes, um, then a big part of, of that whole visit or those that series of visits is learning that um, and getting them the help that they need, whether it's just to get uh, uh, a Medicare reimbursement for something or um, to some kind of program or to find a doctor to get to their appointments whatever whatever it is we want to help them out and do what we can to help them um and and i think it's really to me it's what as masons across the board whatever jurisdiction you're in i think it's what we should have been doing all along um, 
And unfortunately, we Isn't that what we claim we're supposed to be? Isn't that what we claim we do? Exactly. Exactly. We we say we're doing it. <laughs> but are we really doing it? But are you know, but how much effort, time, money are lodges actually putting into doing it? Right. Particularly unsolicited going out and finding opportunities to do it i know some some jurisdictions have um uh you know when a brother calls in and needs his assistance they have a a process that they will go through sure. or go by by getting that brother uh the assistance that he needs yeah. in, in, in order to you know to get whatever thing uh that he that he needs so you know i know that some jurisdictions have that and that, yeah. that's that's what we have but but the whole um the whole point of the outreach program is to go out and find those brothers that need that find mm -hmm. those widows that need that and not wait for them to come to us oh, right. I'll tell you something a lot of brothers mm -hmm. will never make that phone call no you know we still even though we we kind of learn to seduce some things. We still got that little ego we deal with. We may, right. you know, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'll take care of it. Yeah. Right, exactly. And and we don't want them to wait until they're in dire straits um, to to get the help that they're that they need. Um, we want to we want to find out about it and and put them in touch. You know, we're not gonna solve any problems for them. We're not gonna going to um uh, sign them up for anything necessarily mm -hmm. but we've got the phone numbers that they need to call to get signed up we why have exactly agencies we have a, a telemed uh program mm -hmm. if they just you know need something that doesn't really require an in-person visit um they can call into the number and and you know and and have that doctor's appointment then and there um you know all of those kind of things and and you know we go out and we train other masons uh and lodges how to go out and look for this stuff is, is this where the um helping good men to become better men process begins i think it's uh it's at the core of it yeah okay, okay. That's, that's why i say i think it's it's something we should have been doing uh, in this grand line, at least for the past 200 plus years. Well, uh, saying we that proactively. Saying how long have you been a Mason, though? Ninety-three, so twenty-two, thirteen. Oh, that long? <laughs> really, Gene? <laughs> Thirty years. <laughs> You go years. I got a while to go before I get my fifty year pin. Okay, okay. You see, like you was, you was, you like you was going pretty far back. Yeah. Are Are you at forty? Uh, no, I'm. i I've been a mason for a little over thirty years. Okay, okay. Now I do know that your father's a mason. How long has he been a mason? Uh, he's been a mason about uh, five years less than me. Oh. I was an officer in my lodge, um, and uh, a brother and I were were on our way to a lodge meeting, and we stopped by his house. And I said, mm -hmm. "I want to introduce you to brother so and so. He's uh, he's the the deacon of my lodge." Uh huh. And uh, finally, encouraged my dad to to say, "You know, I've always wondered because my dad's always known a lot of masons. My my grandfather, his father in law, was a mason." He's always worked with Mason, especially in the military. Um, he said, you know, I always wondered why your grandfather or, or this guy or that guy, nobody ever asked me to become a Mason. I said, well, we're not allowed to. Mm -hmm. We can't solicit membership. Right. He said, well, then how do you become a member? I said, well, you just said the magic words. <laughs> and I get <laughs> You know, um, and uh, so I got to raise him as a master mason. 
mm-hmm. um, I got to obligate him as an entered apprentice and a fellow craft mm-hmm. and, uh, and raise him as a master mason. And uh, yeah, it was really, really cool. And he became known in Lodge. Uh, when we were in the same Lodge, he became known as the other brother Goldman. Oh, okay. 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 It's, well, before I, before I go to my next my next question and yeah. conversation piece, I just want to welcome everybody for coming in and, and uh, chopping it up with us today. If you have any questions, please do put them in the chat. Um, quite, I think Brother Gene Goldman can see what's happening in the chat, and he'll be able to answer those questions if you see them. Uh, we just wanted to have just they're a, the, if they're on the Zoom, I can. Okay, just wanted to have a real good uh, conversation piece. Now, me and you are the only somebody here today. I wasn't trying to have everybody in here today. It's just me and you, but they are on the the uh, the other the other uh, piece I'm using, so they can definitely chatter in on the other part. Well, you can send me the question. You know, okay. send me the questions, and I'll, oh, yeah. I'll try. No, no doubt about it. So, uh, just wanted to have a good conversation piece. A lot of people in in, in Freemasonry. When they get in, they don't really know what they're getting into. That's what I find a lot of time. What's your take on that? Uh, I, there's actually a, a true story that I wrote a, about that on my blog. Um, just real, real, basically. Um, young man approached us. He was from uh, Vietnam. Didn't know a whole lot about America you know, he was, this is many years ago, um, came over on a boat as a refugee, um, spoke enough English to get by, um, but, you know, not a terribly sophisticated young man, and, and uh, um, he had heard some things about masonry and decided he wanted to, to join, or his mother wanted him to join or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't on his investigating committee, but he came, you know, he came and filled out an application, submitted his fees, and we scheduled his first degree. And the night of his first degree, I will never forget this. Uh Um, And this really lit a fire in me. Uh, The night of his first degree, we had two candidates. So we're, he was going to be the second candidate. And that's just by whoever got their paperwork in first, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, so here's this this young man, doesn't know a whole lot about masonry, doesn't know a whole lot about the U.S., doesn't know a whole lot about anything, really, very shy. So the two guys are waiting uh, out there in the ante room with the Tyler, who is an, a retired Grizzly Marine Corps drill instructor. Mm-hmm. Real mean looking guy. Real gruff sounding guy. Right. He was a teddy bear, but teddy bears are bears. You know what I mean? Yeah, they are. They uh, are. And uh, so here's this old Marine who has a sword. And he's out there keeping these two guys company. And these two guys, just just envision this, if you will. The two stewards come out with their rods, with their spears, Mm -hmm. and drag one of the guys into a changing room. Right. Where he gets changed and comes back out in not in the clothes he originally wore with a blindfold and a rope around his neck right right this kid sees this they pound on the door and first they slam the door in his face and then they open it up and let him in well by the time they came out to get the second candidate there was no second candidate. <laughs> yeah, um, that was... it, it was it. Frankly, it was an embarrassment. <laughs> Somebody should have taken that guy, walked him around the lodge, explained what 
you know, what happens during the ceremonies. Tell them about the different offices, what the implements are all about, um, the nature of symbolism in our fraternity. Um, but nobody did that. Nobody thought to do that. Uh, most guys pick it up eventually, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, it was uh, it was really terrible. I felt really, really bad for for that guy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, ever since then, I I just decided that anybody that I knew that was uh, that was going to become a Mason to make sure that they had, you know, that they had some familiarity right. with, with what we're doing and the, and the fact that everything we do and say is symbolic and it doesn't have a literal, you know, a literal aspect to it. I, I, I would tell you this, when you say that, I, 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 I've come across some gentlemen in my time who literally... They 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 want to take this too hard. I mean, it's and they I mean they really want to take you and do you. But uh before I go into that one, uh one of the gentlemen, uh Dexter that asked me, he said, you know, that's something he he think of the outreach program as something that his particular jurisdiction should be doing. I, I believe that all jurisdictions should have some type of outreach, it may be under a different name of some sorts, but should have some way of you okay. want to call it if you are yeah. asking yourself should we be doing this the answer is yes absolutely and if you're not asking yourself should we be doing this unless you are doing it the answer is yes mm -hmm. um and any lodge that isn't doing it in a deliberate organized manner is really missing an opportunity to um to walk the walk Absolutely. You know, we talk the talk real good, but um, sometimes we need to walk the walk, and and mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to uh, to do that. So yes, I completely agree. And have you seen Have you seen a lot of changes within Freemasonry? Oh yeah, yeah. That's about the only thing that's constant, actually. Um, is is the fact that things change um i've seen changes uh administratively in terms of things that our lodges are allowed to do aren't allowed to do should do shouldn't do um i've seen a lot of changes in our ritual happens just about every year um i've seen some innovations in masonry i've seen uh um, the advent of, uh, in, in my jurisdiction, we call them traditional observance lodges. Mm -hmm. These are modeled on the old school European context where they have, uh, um, you know, it's masonry around the dining room table uh, or a dining table, formal, you know, uh -huh. dining table and with toasts and, you know, they all wear tuxedos for every meeting and they, you know, uh, very, very formal uh, kind of kind of masonry that in most lodges we rarely see. Um, so yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of changes. And of course, every year we elect a new grand master in my jurisdiction and every grand master has his own uh, ideas of uh, of what he envisions for our Grand Lodge. Um, we do work real hard to maintain a certain continuity from year to year. Okay. Between them, we have a Grand Lodge Executive Committee, which is all of the senior elected uh, and elected off uh, Grand Lodge officers um, who just make sure that we're taking a uh, a little bit longer view than sometimes we do um but uh yeah i i've seen lots of things matter of fact it used to be a a a, a joke in uh when we set up the lodge when i came into the lodge the uh for the lecture we put the chair in front of the altar 
Mm -hmm. And then there was a big movement to move it behind the altar because nothing should be between the master and the great lights. Right. And then they moved it back in front of the altar and then back behind the altar. And we used to joke about it. I say, well, where are we going to put the chair this year? You know, it's, um, I've, I've seen a lot of changes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. He was talking, he was talking about regards to his jurisdiction, but with that being said, with those changes that you've seen, what about those interactions with other Masonic jurisdictions? Um, I know between like you and I, we use you give me a call. Hey, look, we're, 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 I'm getting ready to eat, man. Where you at? You running late, man. You always come on now. I'm getting ready to eat. My food's getting cold. You need to hurry up. I know between you and I and some of the other brothers that you know, you try to formulate this Masonic um, lunch man. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your, what's your, what's your, uh, your, your, when you when you do that, what are you trying to to bring together? What are, what what is your idea behind that? Uh, you know, in in my jurisdiction, we are taught uh, in the first degree that Masonry unites men of every country, sect, and opinion, and causes true friendships to exist among those who might otherwise have remained at a perpetual distance. Tony, without masonry, you and I would never have met. Okay, <laughs> that is that is a fact. I, that, that is a true fact. Oh, in one field I work in a totally separate field has nothing to do with yours. Um, you live in a different part of town than I live in. You know different people than I live than I know. I don't even know where you went to high school, but even if it was San Diego, I guarantee it wasn't my high school. Right, right. Um, you know, we we never would have met each other, but we have become friends. And and most of the friends that I have today. Um, with the exception of a of a handful, uh, eight or ten uh, friends that I have from high school or from the Fleet Reserve Association, most of my the friends that I have today, uh, I have met through Masonry in one capacity or another. Mm. Uh, there was a a, a story uh, we were I was written about. Um, in the California Freemason magazine about a, a buddy of mine. He was, uh, he was an officer in the lodge that I helped form. Um, and uh, he was a couple of years behind me in line, but you know, he was, he was a hard worker. And now he was from the Philippines <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, was not real good with English. It was not his first language by any stretch, Mm -hmm. But he was, you know, good enough to, you know, to get by, certainly right. very conversational. Um, but, you know, we were totally different people. We never would have met. We discovered one night um, we were at a practice, an officer's practice. And I'm and somebody said, well, what are you doing, you know, Sunday morning? I said, well, mm -hmm. I like to go to the swap meet mm -hmm. on Sundays. Um, it's like the walk around, see the stuff. And he said, really, I like the swap meet. And until he was stricken with Alzheimer's and really couldn't get out anymore, uh, the two of us and a handful of others, uh, you know, most of the time, but the two of us never missed a Sunday, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Um, we became very, very good friends. I learned a lot about his culture from him. Uh, he learned a lot about, you know, about my my culture and uh, and so forth from me. Um, and uh, that, to me, is what masonry is supposed to be about. It's not about jurisdictions, and I'm in this lodge, which is better than your lodge, and blah blah and my master can beat up your master and all of that nonsense <laughs> it's supposed to be about making friendships with other good men who believe in moral and ethical growth um and uh 
jurisdictions are basically an administrative tool to allow us to provide proper governance for our lodges. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But um, I've been really, really thrilled that that my jurisdiction, the Grand Lodge of California, um, has taken what many have called an extremely adult view of the whole thing. We're not at war with any jurisdiction. Well, wait, don't you, it's not that you're not at war, but you have told a couple of jurisdictions where they can go. We're not at war with any other jurisdiction. We have disagreements with certain jurisdictions over right. certain matters, and we have been forced into positions where we've had to distance ourselves from them a little bit. Okay. But we have never said they're not Masons or they're not deserving. That is true. Gene, I, I said you, you are absolutely right. You, you had, yes. Okay. Um, there are many jurisdictions that we regularly communicate with on matters of mutual interest um, that we do, do not recognize. And you and I have talked about this, that we yes. will probably, if we ever do recognize them, it will be hundreds of years from now. Mm -hmm. um, recognition is just not likely. likely. So uh, what that means is we aren't allowed to visit each other's logic meetings. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we can have joint picnics. As a matter of fact, we, you know, we do. Um, we can see each other socially. We can march in the 4th of July parade together. And we do, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can be in, in newspaper and TV articles about, about masonry. Um, uh, you know, but uh, we just don't visit each other's meetings. And, and everybody, for the most part, is pretty happy about that. Yeah, we've had tiffs with um, some other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, if, if we cannot come to an agreement on general uh, foundational principles, mm -hmm. Then, then we have to say, okay, well, you know, sorry, but um, uh, we're going to take our ball and go home. You know, Bye. you can Bye. still play. You know, you can still play baseball. You can use this field, but um, we're not going to play games with you. Mm. you know, we're gonna now, now, your jurisdiction, is it, let me see, North America? Council of Grand Lodges, how am no. I word okay. misleading that? My, my jurisdiction is the Grand Lodge of California. Uh huh. We, um, we charter constituent lodges throughout the state of California. Um, we are a member, well, because we're uh, what is loosely called a mainstream jurisdiction, there's a group of jurisdictions that are the big ones. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, your jurisdiction, for example, is how many members do, does your jurisdiction have? Oh, not like yours, not like that 52,000 that you carry. Oh, 52? No, we're still uh, over 75. Really? At peak, when I came in 40 years ago, we were at, uh, we were approaching 200,000 members. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. We've lost a lot. There's been a lot of attrition, mostly because the older ones have died off. Um, and there's a lot yeah. of things competing for people's attention these days that uh, that wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we're the big. A friend of ours has called us the big dog. Okay. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, you may have a, a little sandlot you know, Saturday morning game, but we're the major leagues. Okay. okay. Um, All right. But don't, but we're not Saturday morning leaguers. Now we do play on Sundays. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, but go ahead. Okay. So, and there are 51 of these in the United States. Uh, there are uh, eight, I think in Canada and uh, a handful in Mexico. And together, they have formed the 
Council of Grand Masters of North America. And what that council is, is a, a mechanism for communicating with each other about things that are happening in our jurisdictions. And, you know, forming accords and learning from each other. And uh, our, um, our mentor program was picked up by uh, five or six other Grand Lodges before we stopped getting the credit for it. Um, our outreach program has been uh, has started to become adopted by some other jurisdictions, and it's because we go. Our grand masters, our grand secretaries, go to these these annual meetings, and we share what the successes and the opportunities for improvement that we've experienced through the year um, with with the other grand lodges, so that we can all, you know, make things a lot better with each other. Um, but, but that's nothing more than, uh, uh, it's not even an administrative body. It's just a, a means of communicating with other Grand Lodges in North America and, and sharing and, and, and clarifying certain things that we consider staples or standards. Right. Now, I, I do know uh, amongst the African-American Grand Lodges, they have, uh, I believe Prince Hall Grand Lodge has one that is similar. And right. also the Ancient Free and Accepted Masons, they have one that is similar. So each one of those uh, uh, bodies of jurisdictions have something very similar Good. to that. Yeah. It's, a very, it's a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very useful tool because if the Grand Lodge of of uh, New York has, uh, you know, has some kind of event or some kind of program that, that they're starting out, gee, maybe we should, uh, we should think about adopting that in our jurisdiction. So we want to know about it. And the best way to communicate about that is at these, uh, these annual meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we also share with one another, okay, um, this year at our annual communications, we have decided to form uh, Amity with these Grand Lodges. And unfortunately, we've had to sever Amity with those Grand Lodges or whatever the case may be. So we can keep each other up to date on what we are doing in a general sense and, and why we are doing it. Um, my, my, my next question is this. When you sever the amenity, um, amity with another jurisdiction, and they're a part of the same uh, Grand Lodge Council of North America, how does that work? Um, very simple. Amity or recognition uh, in my Grand Lodge means that uh, if, if we are working in amity with one another, we can visit each other's tiled meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're not, we cannot. Um, sometimes it extends to inviting ambassadors to each other's uh, um, Grand Lodge communications and, and so forth. Um, it just means that, that we're working in accord. We're working along the same line. Sometimes there's a, a, a division that happens um, and you know, this is not unfrequent. Um, there's one or two going on with Prince Hall Masonry right now. Um, we have this one. There's a couple of Grand Lodges that have uh, that have uh, um, severed recognition with a couple of others. And I, I don't. It, there's no point in getting into the details, but it was basically Bye. because they're vision of masonry the way they were conducting their masonry was not in accord with what we believe masonry is on a very foundational level and so you know we're just not going to play with you that has nothing to do with sharing information or respecting one another um, the other jurisdictions are still part of the conference of grand masters in north america and they should be right we are cordial but distant with one another mm -hmm. um, 
um, we're just not, uh, um, we're not trading, <laughs> we're not visiting each other's meetings. We're not, um, uh, we're not that closely associated anymore. We're just kind of waving at each other across the fence rather than opening up a gate. But with that being said, when you have friends in those in, in, in that situation, you have that Masonic fellowship that you've had for years, and that happens. What 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 does that do to your Masonic fellowship, or does it taint it? What or do you just say forget about it? We we are who we are. That's All right, I've got a couple of friends who are Masons in uh, in other locations. I've got quite a few actually. Um, I, I have a buddy who's. Uh, who's a past master in Texas. Um, we've known each other quite a long time. Um, if we, now we do recognize Texas. So the last, uh, matter of fact, whenever I am in Texas, whether on business or pleasure, I'll always make it a point, you know, if I'm in his, his area, Texas is a big state too. Um, but I've always made it a point to contact him and say, Hey, Jack, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be in, in Dallas on, on this week. Is there anything going on? And we'll go attend a couple of meetings together or whatever. Um, if we, if we um, revoke recognition of his grand lodge, then I wouldn't be able to go to those tiled meetings. I'd still be able to go to this picnic. Mm -hmm. I'd still be able to go to the festive board that he has before the meeting. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, but I wouldn't be able to, to go to his, to the tiled meeting. Okay. Closed meeting. That's, that's all that it means. That's, that's what recognition means. I cannot share the, what we consider to be the secret part of our ritual right right even though all already know whether or not they are <laughs> is beside the point we <laughs> make a promise to keep them private correct correct okay now you may know my passcode on my or my pin number uh -huh. pm card but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay. Whether or not, you know, is beside the point. The point is I have made a promise. Okay. You may know the, the inner workings of my employer mm -hmm. every bit as closely as me. But when I accepted employment, I signed a non-disclosure agreement. And that says that I'm not allowed to talk about certain things related to the company with non-employees whether or not you know about those things doesn't matter i'm not permitted to share information about them with you um that's that's what it means but that's that's a simpler way of really breaking it down i mean but you and i have been in conversations pieces with other people and they look at it totally different they'd be like oh snap oh you know. people I have noticed that there are people who tend to try to make it a lot more complex and nuanced than it, than it is, but I don't think it needs to be that way. And I don't think there's any, uh, any, you know, value added from having it that way. So I don't participate in those, uh, in those things. I think it's a very, very simple thing. We're not allowed to visit each other's meetings. We're not allowed to coach each other in the ritual. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, it's, it's just that simple. But I do have one more question as we continue this conversation. In your jurisdiction, do you have like an all Jewish lodge or anything like that? We have, uh, we have lodges that um, they're called affinity lodges. Mm -hmm. We have lodges that have uh, none of our lodges are all anything. Well, yeah, but yeah, we've had this conversation before between ourselves. But served as master, my mother lodge is now about eighty percent Filipino. Um, 
wasn't always that way. When I came in, it was, uh, um, well, the, the way I explained it was there has never been uh, a lodge where the majority of members are Jewish, but the lodge that I first joined was a lodge that if you were a Jewish Mason in San Diego, you were probably a member of this lodge. And the reason was very simple. We made it easy um, on the Jewish members. We never held meetings on a Jewish holiday or on Fridays. We didn't serve, uh, you know, pork and or, or shellfish or whatever at our dinners. We didn't keep kosher necessarily, mm -hmm. but but we we respected uh, the dietary constraints and the holidays and the the various restrictions of Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also had a lot of cops. Most of the cops and retired cops that were um, Masons in San Diego County were members of my mother lodge. We also had a lot of guys from Convair and General Dynamics and quite a few guys in the furniture industry for some reason. Um, I knew a whole bunch of, of guys who owned furniture stores or, or you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, and, and I've got stories about all of those, but, um, you know, and, and it's, it's just, look, it's very simple. Um, a good friend of mine, John, who was one of my coaches when I came in, mm -hmm. was a retired uh, sheriff's a deputy. He had started, when he retired, he started a business of, uh, of police law enforcement supplies, uniforms and supplies for law enforcement and firefighting mm -hmm. and whatnot. You know, he sold holsters, he repaired uh, mag lights, um, all of that kind of thing. So most of the law enforcement officers in San Diego County knew John pretty well, okay? Um, so if you were a cop and you were going to become a Mason and you mentioned to your, to your partner, I've been thinking about becoming a Mason. What's your partner going to say? Oh, you need to go down and talk to John at the supply. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So John signs your petition mm -hmm. and, you know, and there you go. So now we got a lot of cops and, it, you know, it just happens that way. There was no requirement that you be in law enforcement. Right. Or work for General Dynamics or be Jewish or, or Filipino or, or any yeah. There used to be, I, I don't know if it's still there or not, three-star lodge. Is that lodge still around? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we share a lot of members with them. Um, and, and there are whole um, social reasons for, um, for lodges like that. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was working over at Coronado Hospital, uh, there was a brother there. Uh, his son was in the Boy Scouts and he was in the self-acute unit and uh, he was a Mason of Three Star and that's how I got to know Three Star Lodge. But the uniqueness is, is like you said, it was for Mason, it was, it was, it was in regard to masonry that he and I met and his son ended up at Cardinal Hospital on the same unit that I was on and it was a serious illness and it was a subacute unit and it and it made for an easy transition for him, knowing that he had someone there that he considered a brother or friend watching over his son care. So it, it, it really kind of eased things for him. When um, uh, I got a call one time from a, from a Mason back in Massachusetts, his daughter was registering for school for college out here mm -hmm. uh, in San Diego. And he wanted to know if it was okay for him to give her my phone number um, in case she ever needed something. I said, yeah, absolutely. The first time she calls me, she's going to get an invitation to dinner. But, you know, give her my number. And, you know, I'd be more than happy to help her out if she, you know, if she has a need. Um, she never did call, but that's okay. Um, it, it, it provides a certain, like you said, a level of comfort. That to know that okay there are there are some resources here, and uh, my 
my kids know that, you know, if they're ever really in a jam, uh, to find a lodge. And, you know, they'll get some kind of help. May not solve their problem, but they'll get, you know, at least they'll get steered in the right direction for getting help or whatever. I, I have a story. I was in Texas and it was night. I mean, <laughs> I was driving across country, headed back home with my family. And I found assistance aid from a brother. He was like, uh, sir, you okay? Pulled over this big ass pickup truck. And I was feeling some type of way. I'm not going to lie. And he was like, uh, are you okay? I'm like, nah, my car, the, the uh, serpentine belt had came off of the, uh, off so it was overheating he's like well i need to tell you this we need to get you off the road and we're gonna get you to a safe spot because where you at now is not a good place sir <laughs> i was like let's do it I car about maybe three miles down the road praying to god it wouldn't burst a blowing engine man he he stayed there until the car got fixed i mean to me that was one of my first uh i would say experiences, encounters, one of those things that you only hear about in Freemasonry, but to say this actually happened, yep. it, it was like, okay, all right, absolutely. I have a very, very similar story in my blog um, that's, uh, that's true uh, about a, a good friend of mine. I've lost touch with him uh, over the last 30 years, unfortunately, but um very, very similar story. And I had a similar experience. I was in uh, um, Illinois uh, for on business. And I had a free evening and there was a lodge um, that was having a meeting. So I, you know, talked to them and I was going to go to their meeting. Um, and I'm driving around and, and boy, I took a serious wrong turn. Mm. And there are areas in the Chicagoland <laughs> area yes, yes. that are a little less than hospitable. Correct. Um, at times. And uh, a guy, you know, and I'm driving around looking for this lodge, right? Now, I don't know what kind of neighborhood this is. It's, it's uh, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, go ahead. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, guy pulls up and asked me to roll down the window. He said, uh, he saw my hat and he said, uh, you're a Mason. I said, yeah. He said, uh, you are lost, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, yeah. How did you know? He said, because you don't want to be in this area. Um, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to such and such lodge. And he said, okay, follow me. Do not, you know, do not lose me. I will take you right there. And he drove me right there. And uh, what do I know? He may have saved my life or something. Well, I'm quite sure he, he, he took care of you as he should. Yeah, yeah, he took Absolutely. care of you. Um, and and uh, um, he told me when, when we got there that he was a Prince Hall Mason. Um, and, uh, and that's why he, you know, that's why he, uh, he pulled up alongside me. So, um, yeah, it happens and it should happen. Right. It happened, you know, um, uh, unfortunately the story on, on my blog is a little long to go into, but it involves, uh, um, an African-American brother. Uh, and his wife, who was uh, Native American, mm -hmm. and they were traveling through Georgia, the Deep South. Okay. And now this one should be pretty good. Go for it. I, don't take all day, but kind of get to the meat part. Their motorhome ran out of gas, and uh, so they're stranded by the side of the road, and being a Mason, he starts, you know, giving the so waving. sign to, to passing cars. And I swear to God, at least if he was telling me the truth, the station wagon pulled up. Yes, we had station wagons back then. We station. do, but this, we, it's funny you say that now. We still have station wagons. They call them SUV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a difference. <laughs> the station wagon pulled up and there were 
uh, three guys in in there in the car, and, and there were sheets in the back. And one of them rolled down the window and and asked him if he was a mason, and he said, "Yes, I am, sir." He said, Are "You having a problem?" He said, "Yes, I am, sir." Uh, well, what's your problem? And he told him they drove him down uh, to the gas station, to the closest gas station. They they borrowed a gas can from the proprietor there, who did not loan out gas cans, um, filled it up, drove him back to his motor home, helped him put the gas in there, then followed him down to the station to both return the, the can and fill up his tank. And uh, having safely arrived, they drove off to their clan meeting. Um, well, being a Mason doesn't mean you can't be that way. It means we don't want you to, but but they did the right thing. They did the right thing. Hey, I, I'm not. It's a good. They did the right thing. They did the right thing. True. True. You know, my you know my hats off to them. They did the right thing. Um, so yeah, it, it does happen. It does happen. Um, and that's that's what being mason to me anyway. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. And it's not only to you, but I believe for those who are in the craft, who enjoy the craft, regardless of jurisdiction, they see it that way too. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the nonsense that we see on on Facebook, um, I have never seen outside of Facebook, and I've. <laughs> no I don't more. think you ever will see it outside of Facebook. I think it's just people get it. People do what they do behind closed doors and say things, and but that's that that may not really be who they are, but that's that's who they want to portray. I that's, I'm just throwing it out there, you know. They're keyboard warriors, is what they're called. Right. Absolutely. You know, they, 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 they're they're really big time uh, when they're anonymous. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, I like people to hit the up uh, the like button for me, please. Uh, today, once again, I have Brother Gene Goldman on. He's a member of California Grand Lodge, and he and I we've been knowing each other for quite a while. We had some great conversations. Uh, you know, we have agreed to discipline some things. I'm going to open up this. I'm going to say this. I'm a terrible speller. Gene knows it. Yes, you He's are. in my ass about it. Yes, it is are. no disrespect to me. I've never, I've never taken it that way from him. That's just us to be honest. You are a horrific speller. But you know what, though? I can <laughs> I am. But it is who I am. And it, sure. take it and let it alone, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I can, I can honestly say that in those years that we've been in these uh, uh, Facebook groups and we've been going back and forth, you know, and have you, and I've seen how you've dealt with people, even for myself. Sometimes I sit back and I just watch and wait. And I notice now that not too many of us say things anymore. We just look at a post and, uh, okay, hit like, move on, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I, I've just lost my appetite for all of that. Well, it, it, it's just like having, having certain fools all the time. You do get tired of it. I mean, but then again, you know, there comes a time you want to just peep in and see what's actually happening. And I and I and I think a lot of times in some of these groups that we find ourselves in, that is what happens. You know, you peep in. Oh, okay, that's a good conversation piece. But I yeah. do appreciate some of the things that I find in in these groups uh, uh, are pretty enlightening. There's some good information that, get, that gets to be put out. Uh, only if people are more open to accepting the information instead of trying to tear another person down regarding of uh, of the messenger. Who has that information, you know? Yeah. Um, I would also like to invite your listeners or whatever it is um, to my blog uh, where I've shared 
some of these stories that I've talked about. Yeah, um, what's what's your blog? Right. It's Gene Goldman, one word, dot wordpress.com. Gene Goldman, one word. Dot wordpress dot com. Dot wordpress dot com. Yeah. And uh, you know, please stop by, leave me a note. Um put that in the chat for me, uh Gene, on here. Uh, yeah, that'll work. We've been on here for, for a pretty good little minute. What we got? And you'll see all my uh my I've got a bunch of posts and some pages, and I'm not sure what the difference is but i don't think it matters all that much nah <laughs> it, it doesn't so they i get i passed that information on for you good good yeah definitely definitely it, it's just a place where i have shared some of uh some of masonry mm -hmm. you know at least uh to my experience so. i would imagine for those of us who are masons uh, we have great stories. I mean, things that people wouldn't necessarily believe. I mean, like you, you would have to be like, that couldn't have happened. That there's no, there's no way that could have happened, but it did happen. And and I know I've come across some. I've I've experienced quite a few myself. And I see. Uh, let me see this. Let's see. Somebody just po posted something. They said they had the same experience. I think Brother Fred uh, Shields Jr. said he had a very similar experience than the one you was explaining just a little while ago. So, you know, we have, we've had some experiences, but I do have another question for you. Okay. Do, do the Grand Lodge of California have a grand chapter of the Order of the Eastern Star? Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. We approach it a little bit differently. Eastern Star is a totally independent organization, um, but because they have a requirement that, men be a master mason in good standing um, to join um, they require our grand lodges sanction or licensure if you will okay I mean, we have any authority over it. um it's the same with the shrine the scottish right the york right and so forth we don't have back, no 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 gene let's get back to the eastern star part that's going to shock a lot of people you need to probably repeat that part again, just that part for the Eastern Star. We have no authority over them, but we do allow our members. It was explained to me like this by a, a past grandmaster and, and rather noted attorney. It's like your driver's license. Okay. Now, if you own a big piece of property, a farm or, or something like that, Mm -hmm. You can drive whatever you want, anywhere you want on that property. And nobody can say boo about it. Okay. You're going to take it on a public road. You need a California driver's license. You need to have the vehicle registered and inspected and all of that because you are, use, you are required to use your license to drive on those roads. Yeah, right. it's the same thing with joining. <coughs> we call them accordant, uh, right? And affiliated bodies. Mm -hmm. um, so any organization that requires Masonic membership, we want to make sure that the the organization is, you know, aligned. Uh, to what we believe are the, the right thing, ways to run the organization, that they're financially responsible. So we want to see their books, um, that they're, you know, that they don't restrict their membership according to uh, religion or, or, you know, any, anything like that, that they're, they're operating over and above board. Um, and uh, we have had um, some organizations that uh, have not lived up to that um, and uh, that we don't sanction them. So 
members of this Grand Lodge are not allowed to join those organizations. Um, and, uh, you know, but, but Eastern Star, we do recognize. Um, there's about a dozen, I guess, uh, concordant or affiliated bodies that, uh, that we list as, um, as authorized for Master Masons, for California Masons to join. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not on that list, you can't join them. But that doesn't mean we can tell them, um, you know, what to do in, in any sense of it. Um, it just means that, that we can tell our members whether or not they can be members there. Um, and you know what? It's, it's no different. I mean, if you're, if you're a football player and you're in the, the NFL, you're not allowed to play in a USFL game because they don't sanction that. You're not allowed to endorse certain things, um, you know. So, uh, yeah. The the but the Eastern Star is one of the organizations that Master Masons in this jurisdiction are permitted to join. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and one of the better ones. Hmm. Well, I, I see a question in chat. It says uh, to ask you. Do you uh, recognize Moses, Nimrod, and Imhotep to be Freemasons of old? I have no idea. I'm, I'm only in my 60s. <laughs> and, and I never met either one of them. I really couldn't tell you. I think he, I, I think he was meaning that Masonically in regards to like King, uh, King Solomon and others that have been said to have been Masons. Um, there, I, I've written about this a number of times. Our recorded, contiguously recorded history goes back to 1717. And before that, aside from, uh, well, there's a lodge in Scotland that, that has a lot of minutes prior to that. But for the most part, we have references to organizations that appear very similar to what we today know as Mary, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not they were masonry, who knows? Um, because uh, you know all of that is lost to antiquity, and there's a lot of theories, and some are more interesting than others, and some are more probable than others, uh, some are more entertaining um, than others, but they're all exactly that. They're theories. Mm, okay. Uh, William Green said, I must have missed where the differences with the OES if they have to meet Master's Mason's requirement. I don't, I don't quite get that one, but. Male members of the Eastern Star must be Master Masons in good standing in California. Okay. That's the best way to put women, it right there. Women must, and, and that's Eastern Star's requirement. Mm -hmm. Women must have a Masonic relationship. Da daughter, sister, mother, granddaughter, widow, whatever. Yeah, um, I, just, I just put in the chat exactly what he just said. And I don't know how to add any better than that. So, yeah, you have to be a Master Mason in good standing uh, to be a member of the Eastern Star. That's Eastern Star's requirement. But because they have that requirement, we say it's okay. Well, and um, we have, um, you know, taken a look at who they are, what they do. Um, we say that it's okay for our members to be members there. There are other organizations that we that don't allow our members to join. Okay. Uh, you know, whether or not we will at some point, who knows? Right. Uh, let's see, what else do I see here? <clears throat> uh, my last, the last guest I had on some time ago was Professor uh, James Smalls 
I'm not for sure if you ever heard of him. No, can't say that I have. Okay. Well, I could say it, but it wouldn't be true. <laughs> no, I don't need for you to don't don't say you know him because a lot of people in the chat do. And they then they will be like, oh my goodness, nah. I don't believe I don't believe I've ever crossed him, no. <clears throat> yeah, as let's see. Let me see, George. I'm going to post this one to Eugene and see what you think about this one here. Okay. Give me just a second. Uh, must no, not that one. Not this is that was one, and here's another one too. Difference with OES if they have to meet master mason requirements, yes. As free and accepted masons, is it unheard of to be a member of free and accepted masons as well as? As far as no. Um, well, first of all, the free and accepted, ancient free and accepted, are a, a distinction without a difference, but. Um, well, the difference is stationary, but as far as being a member of both uh, Prince Hall Lodge and uh, and mainstream, as far as I know, and I do know for a fact in California, when we formed recognition of Prince Hall Masonry in California, one of their conditions was that we not allow um, uh, multiple memberships, we not allow transfers of memberships. Um, and one of the reasons for that is um, they only allow their members to be members of one lodge. Um, so uh, they have that requirement and we respect it. There, there are also mainstream jurisdictions. I know the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania is that way. They, you can only be a member of one Pennsylvania lodge, and you can't be a member of any lodge in any other jurisdiction. Um, and they have reasons for it. And so, yeah, it's pretty unheard of to be a mainstream Mason as well as uh, Prince Hall, either PHA or PHO. Mm. I think that's about it. We've been on here for about an hour and a half. I certainly want to say I, I appreciate you coming on. Just a second. Got it. I appreciate you coming on. And uh, by the way, how's the wife doing? Good. Give Good. my regards. Definitely give my regards. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank, thank goodness and knock wood, the whole family is doing well. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting along. My grandkids are getting older and feisty. <laughs> Don't they? Oh, man, they do. Yeah, I'll tell you a real quick story. My children were very young. Whenever we would pass by a farm or um, out in horse countries, a feed store on the corner, and when they're open for business, they have pails outside. So anytime we would we would pass one, I would go, "Hey," and point at the "Hey," because that's "Hey." Um, and uh, my, I was uh, bringing my granddaughter home from school one day, and. We drove by the store and <laughs> I pointed at it. Hey. And she said, Papa, I don't have to go for that anymore. I'm 11. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she's a sophisticated, worldly woman now. Right. With <laughs> mm. <laughs> knows all about life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she doesn't have to have to go for that. So that was fun. I see one more, and then we're going to have to go after this one. Gene, esoteric, esoteric, do your Grand Lodge jurisdiction participate? 
we recognize that there is a strong esoteric component our degrees certainly because all of the symbolism really is esoteric you take from it the mean that you take from it we don't prescribe uh what these things will mean to you in any detailed sense we present you the symbols and give you a framework for understanding why we use those symbols and you make of them what you do that's esotericism um so yeah okay because the reason I, I believe that question is there is because i believe some going back to when uh i see fred shields was asking him not about the about nimrod and regarding moses because some of the old books have the have those names mentioned in them oh there's old books that have moses and 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 uh, uh What's his name? Noah. Right. The whole field of masonry called Noahite masonry. That, that may have been what he was speaking about too. I'm not really for sure, but I that that could have been it. I I don't want to I don't want to say that he wasn't. We don't get into that in my jurisdiction. I can't speak for others. Right. Okay. Are um, there any are there any um other degrees that your jurisdiction may offer, uh, college, what they call college degrees and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, well, we have the Institute for Masonic Studies um, and we have uh, symposia every year. Um, and we have, uh, um, we have our officers workshops and various certifications that uh, particularly lodge officers can get in, uh, Admin all kinds of lodge administration um, information. Um, and uh, we do have information about some degrees or some uh, college courseware um, offered in certain uh, California universities that regards symbolic studies, but those are not ours, those are just Margaret Jacobs is a, a tenured professor at the uh, University of California and teaches a, a series of classes on, on uh, ritual study and that, uh, that we've, you know, discussed from time to time. Did your, not re here recently, did your grand lodge just hold some type of uh symposium uh conference or something mm -hmm. yeah we we have uh one or two every year um we usually try to do one in the northern part of the state and one in the southern part of the state uh usually on the same topic but in uh some of our more lean times or especially during the last couple of years we've had to kind of pair those back and and uh, be a little bit more selective and do them over Zoom or, or similar things. But yeah, we put on a conference every year. Okay. Is, is that open or what is that? Closed or open? Oh, it's open. Okay. Okay. Anybody wants to attend me? Because I think I've seen, I, I believe I've seen you put up a post not long ago in regards to that. That's, that kind of clicked through my mind. And I think I, it was in I the open area. I try to put the word out when I hear about them. Right. Okay. Well, look, I certainly appreciate your time. It's been fun to have you on. It's been a good conversation piece. And uh, let's... You owe me lunch. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do that. We can do that. We can do that. And uh, see if we can bring some other brothers out. Sure. I think sure. that'll be great. I think that'll be great. So look, I don't have anything else to add. I once again, I want to appreciate you coming on, sharing your time with us, and having a great conversation with regards to Freemasonry, and just, just really just chopping it up. Um, as I said before, so for those of you who want to join us later on, maybe you can uh, just let me know. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and log off off the uh, channel here, Gene. GeneGoldman.wordpress.com. Visit my blog, post 
post my blog. Yeah, I did. I'm going to post it again. I got it. I'm posting it right now again for you. Stop by and check his log out. His blog out. I'm quite sure he has quite a bit to say. Yeah. Some of it's mine. Some of it's written by other people. I try to give attribution wherever I can. That's right. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. There, there it goes. Okay, got it. Got it in there for you. Okay. So, oh, I, I hear a little one in the background right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting to be dinner time, so. <laughs> All right, dude. So, look, we're going to let you go. Certainly appreciate you coming on. And to everybody who joined us tonight, once again, it was great having you here. And as as I say all the time, you know, I'm not your study guy, but I'm here to help you study. And any information that you've gotten, please, you know, hey, it, it helps you to become a better person, a better mason, help you to enhance in anything you're doing. That's great. And uh, peace be to you as we travel. Thank you, and I appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and log off tonight. Uh, hey, if you got any questions, don't forget to hit it in the chat, and we'll, we'll take it up from there. Okay. All right, Brother Gene. 